el el sister hello sister el sister que eu dormi ali estamos hello el sister on a lady braces ah sister on a lady braces bona I always tell my, my, my students and myself to say, if you think it's easy, you are doing it wrong. A lot of people go around claiming, I'm in your head. My guy, you don't know what's acting. <laughs> You do not know what is acting. So acting, it's it, even though. Do you think you can born an actor? I believe so, but you always need to polish it. Yes. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, it's like buying a school shoe. Mm. It's always going to be a school shoe. Yes. But it's not always going to be shiny. It's tough going nine to five. It's tough in the f industry that we are in. Yes. So choose your struggles. <laughs> it's not easy anyway. Nine to five is hard. I mean, I'm waking up at six to go do something you don't love. But you have to do it because you have to survive. Yes. No one can tell me that they're happy to do that. Yes. Yo, 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 welcome to No Chill, to another episode of No Chill Vodcast by Fetu. As you already know, we exist to encourage you, to educate you, and to entertain you. That's why we're here. Every Sunday, we're going to be here by Fetu, and you know that we bring art in this area. People who are artistic, people who are talented, and people who are on social media. You know, I get a lot of questions. People say, ah, no, you can I come to your podcast. I mean, be on social media, do something. Then you'll come here, you know. On today's episode, we're afraid to, I'm um, chilling with one of the creatives, uh, someone who's been doing so well. I've been watching him for too long now. That's why he's here. His name is Debu Wo, Brandon Oliphant on TikTok. Uh, you know him by Tebza or Tebu. You know, there's some characters that he does there which are very funny and at the same educational, you know. He's very relatable. He has over 400,000 followers on TikTok. And he's a producer. He's, uh, he's qualified a drama qualification. You have a qualification in drama? Oh, drama, yeah, yeah, B-Tech. B-Tech. So everything that he does on social media it's just a, a reflection of his knowledge. And welcome to Not Your Podcast, my brother. But guys, before, as you know, before we dive, as you know, we are here because we have a sponsor. Uh, we are partnered with EasyBet. And EasyBet is a platform whereby you can go and bet. And remember, betting should be fun. I feel too. It should be fun and easy. We're making betting easy. That is their slogan. And thank you so much, Isabel, for giving us this opportunity. And guys, bet responsibly. It has to be fun and easy. So now let's dive in, man. Um, I've been watching you for long, and I knew you before you even become a yeah. TikToker. Uh, <laughs> you know, we used yeah. to talk, and you, at some point, you wanted to to be part of my team. You wanted to edit my podcast and all those kind of things. And now, within two years, you are out here. So let's start before with the content. Let's start. Let's go back to your childhood. I always want to know how you grew up, where you grew up, and how was your childhood like, you know, in the beginning when you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Sure. I really appreciate it, man. Um, my childhood was quite interesting. Yeah. If you watch my content, actually, you get to see how I grew up. But my childhood basically was just me being born in Soweto, being raised in Soweto, yeah. being inspired by whatever that we saw in Soweto. And at that time, there wasn't a lot that we could take from as kids to want to look up to. Yeah. Because, you know, we had a lot of gangsters and people who spin cars and yeah. whatnot. But 
at that time it was all we knew and all i knew so it was quite fun you know grew mm. up in a very loving home family yeah and yeah stayed in istrand from a young age and moved to um sorry stayed in soweto from a young age born and raised in soweto then moved to the eastrand yeah and my childhood was basically entertaining and I, I i i read somewhere that at age 15 you were already writing you know yes. drama and you were playing it also what what influenced or what inspired that whole um, passion of writing and and doing drama at that young age because i mean you're growing in kasi i mean these things are yeah. not are not th- that popular in, in that case you know sure. it's something that you have, you should have maybe you you've seen it from someone what what influenced you to 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 become someone who love writing you know the the early stages of my life where I actually realized that I'm into art and I love art was mm. when I think I was still young every time something would play like generations would play yeah. then an advert would come on I would stand and my mom would like put the TV on mute and they watch me so I would mimic the character so if you see Zolo Mobega Velili when it comes an advert I would wait for that moment because I know it's my time to shine at home Wow. So it became a thing where from then I started meeting Regina Dubey, yes. um, who showed me theatre, who bought my first scripts, um, yes. who actually groomed me to understand art beyond what I thought I knew about it. So it's 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 a passion. Even now, you're still doing it. So this thing is inside you, you know. Of course, I, I always say I don't <laughs> think there's nothing else that I know better than doing this. Yeah, man, you know it's so hard because we get to to lose ourselves within the system you know um yeah. a lot of people are talented but they they're no longer focusing on their talents you know yeah. how did you manage to keep it up until this point from the age of 15 up until now there were so many things obviously that could have taken you away True. from focusing on your your thing how did you if you can remember your, the, the strategy that you use yeah. because some people can't do that i think for me the most important thing is being the best at what i do yeah i always always say my biggest fear is being average i don't want to be like average i don't want us there's a lot of people who are cool with being average i don't want to be average yes. where that comes to me as a person how i dress yes. there's always something weird about me but it's something i love i don't just say i'm gonna be weird yeah you know but there's always something weird but I love it because it makes me unique. It makes me stand out in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so, okay, before I derail, can you please repeat the question again? No, it's more of how did you... Oh, maintain it. Sorry. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, for me, it's a matter of passion. You know, I love it more than anything and I just want to be great at it yeah. and become better than yesterday. So the reason why I'm still at it is because I'm not at the level that I wish to become in terms of the things that I wish to do. Yes. So I'm always pushing boundaries when it comes to it. And I realized after so many years of me wanting to be the best at what I do, yeah. it started feeding me. It started making me money. It started, you know, um, giving me a lifestyle. It started yeah. just changing my life. So mm. I was like, hey, if you can change my life and you're honest like this with me, then sure. I'm going to be loyal to you too and be honest to you. So yeah. I think for me, I always put art first. Even my slogan is um, God, family, art. Those are the three things I live for. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's very impressive, man. I mean, you need to live by something. And, of and, course. And um, as this podcast it is it, the reason why it's here is because we're focusing on three e's yeah. you know educate entertain and encourage people so now you mentioned regina dube you know i i assume that she's she's very huge in that d- industry yes, right yes, how did you get an opportunity to meet uh <laughs> how did you get the opportunity to meet her because i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you from soweto who made it to happen how do you even have access to even get a privilege to be mentored by her and 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 now yeah she installed that desire and passion to continue you know to be honest it was it, it wasn't as difficult or it's it's not one of those interesting stories where i'd say uh you know yeah, i was going there and then you yeah know, um as soon as i moved from soweto and i stayed in the east trend she mm. stayed in my hood yeah, well. oh so she was one of those um actors, famous actors in the hood that everyone knew would see all these rich China do in the hood. Mm. And then I'd always used to see her. Yeah. And with my interest of acting, I thought, hey, if I can speak to this lady, it's going to make things a bit easier for me in terms of the art industry. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what I thought. And yes. If you're actors, 
Sure. So I went to her and at that time I was quite different. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I had um a gold tooth. Mm. Uh I used to I used to be very much influenced by this Cortana's lifestyle, but I was never his Cortana, you know? Okay, cool. So when I went to that lady, funny thing is she told me, if you want to be an actor, you need to change your image. If we need a golden TV, we'll put one uh, on you. That's what she said. Mm. Yeah. Go and change your image and come back when you're serious. Yeah. And literally after two weeks, I went back home. I told my mom after two weeks, I came back. I looked a bit cleaner. Mm. I told her, this is me. My goal is removed. I'm good. I want to do this. I'm serious about it. And then yeah. she started taking me to the theater and teaching me about it. Cool, man. Now let's talk about the theater. Um, what, what is the importance of having as an actor or someone who focuses on art or someone that wants to, uh, become art in this, in this industry, right? The importance of having that experience in theater, mm. uh, what did it do to you today and, and mm. even then when you were starting? Yo, it did a lot. It did a lot, to be honest. That's one thing that I'm always grateful and humbled for, you know, yeah. the process of me studying drama. Yeah. And the reason why I'm saying that is because first, uh, first of all, it taught me discipline. Okay. Now, it taught me a lot of discipline. So what a lot of people don't know about acting is that in theater, we are taught that theater is a sacred space. So first of all, we don't wear shoes in a theater. When we enter, we don't wear shoes. We take shoes off. Mm. You know, we go inside. We, we, we appreciate the space. Like it's, it's a bit like church for us, but for performance, Ooh, you know. Yeah. So it taught me discipline. It taught me, um, how to work with other people. It taught me how to be more creative as well. And it also taught me how to become the person that I am when it comes to acting. Yes. You know, I also found myself as a director and as a writer. Cause before I went to school, I mm. actually thought I was just an actor. I yeah. just want to go study acting. Yeah. But being there and learning other things as well and being at school, yeah. it actually taught me quite a lot. So I would say theater taught me a lot when it comes to improving my skills, improving yeah. my talents, discipline, and also appreciating art for what it is. Mm. You know, so I don't love myself in art, mm. but I love art in me. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned that you love the art in you. You know, yes. and that's something is deep. Can you explain that in a yeah. very simpler way? Because I kind of feel like there's so much to say about that. Yes, yes, um, of course. So that's one motto I live by, which actually drives how I move with my content. Yeah. I'll make a simple example. I hope I don't forget. If I do, I'll ask you to remind me. I forget a lot, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'll make the simple example. Mm. There's a lot of people within mm. the content creation world mm. that are fighting so hard to trend all the time yeah they don't want to find niches because a niche is very tricky as much as it identifies you and puts you aside but some people get tired of it some people don't want to watch it anymore because they kind of know what to expect even mm. though they don't know what to expect yes you know? <laughs> yeah so some somehow they get tired of it so some people would fight to get you know um to trend which means they're all over the place not yes. knowing what they want to yes. do and what not yes so the reason why I believe, mm. and this is my opinion, the reason why I believe most mo most of Abantu Bayan Zalanjalo, it's because they're trying to, they love the hype that comes with trending. Yes. You get what I mean? Yeah. So that makes them want to always get that adrenaline rush of saying, if you don't me a trend, if you don't me a trend, yes, yes. instead of saying, I'm comfortable with my art, I'm creating this art, I love it, I'm going to improve in it, and I'm going to master this thing. So that's what I'm trying to say when I say, you know, I love the art in me. For me, mm. what's important, I used to do snow puzzle um, content. People loved it where I just hold the phone and, and, and speak like yeah. most people do. Yeah. But as time went, I stopped doing it. Some people still say they want it. But for me, there wasn't any growth because there's no way to grow from that. You know, I can't improve it. It's, it's, it's stagnant. Yeah. But with characters, it's challenging because to add another character, it's, it's hard. Yes. It's not an easy thing to do. That's why most creators have two, three characters. Yes. You know, so yeah, loving the art in you is you wanting to do more to improve your art more than wanting to shine with your art. That's deep, man. That's deep yes. because uh, a lot of people, especially people who just follow you, they want you to do what they followed you for. True. And, if you focus on them, you're not growing at mm. all. True. Because now it's more of, I need to always keep these people this yeah. thing. But yeah. now, like you said, you get stagnant. Man, you know, the reason why I asked about the theater part is because a lot of people now, 
they just assume that having a lot of followers can get them into acting. <laughs> <laughs> touch up, touch, can you please touch that? Yeah, yeah. I disagree. I disagree a lot. Yeah, and a lot of content creators think they're good actors or they think they they're acting. Yes. Look, no chill. We were taught, and I also have students that I teach. You know, yeah. under DED and TUT. Yeah. So what happens is that I always tell my, my my students and myself to say, if you think it's easy, you are doing it wrong. Oh. A lot of people go around claiming I'm in your actor. My guy, <laughs> you don't know what's acting. You do not know what is acting. So acting is, even though, do you think you can born an actor? I believe so, but you always need to polish it. Yes. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's like buying a school shoe. Mm. It's always going to be a school shoe. Yes. But it's not always going to be shiny. Yes. Sometimes mm. it can be dusty. Mm. You know, so it's up to you as a person with your, how do I keep this talent? Yes. You know, I need to always practice, become better at it. Yes. So it's different. A lot of people think they can just come from content creation and go into the acting industry. And yes, some of them can try, but to be honest, it's not as easy as they think it is. You know, acting is a craft. It's a, it's a, it's a career on its own. It has ways in which you approach it in order to do it right and well. Yeah. You know, um, if it was that easy, for example, then People would excel in characters, yes. you know, but you hear the same voices. There's three characters. It's one voice in all of them. Only thing that's different. This one has a wig. This one has yes. a filter. This yes. one. But you can still see and tell that oh, this is one person. Yes. That's not, that, that, that's failure in a way. Because, <laughs> because, you know, bruh, and I know I'm touching more about acting because that's what I think you yeah. can talk yeah. about. Like content creation is that just you extending my skill you on understand the platform, on yeah. the platform and you are acting yes, you are sir. acting there yes, you understand sir. so you are an actor yes you know through qualification and also applications yes, yes. you understand because uh now there are people who are saying Ish, this industry of acting is closed hmm. you know uh what do you think i know i'm jumping questions but because we are at this now we're talking about it now I'd rather just mention it now because there are mm. so many questions that talks about the industry itself. People, so many people, bro, like they think that this acting industry, there are gatekeepers, there are people who mm. keeps on showing on different stories, different soapies and all this thing, and they feel like it's unfair. Yeah. How, how do you, what is your perspective with regards to that? Yo, the one is a very tricky one. Yeah. It's a very tricky one because, to be honest, from school, that's what we are taught as well, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, a school system doesn't matter which course you do, but it teaches us to be a worker at the end of the day. No school teaches you how to own a company. No school teaches you how to make money. Yes. They all just teach us to be workers. To be workers. So, um, I would say basically me going to school mm. and... Okay, I forgot. I forgot the question again. The question is like, how how do you perceive this whole thing of the industry being closed? Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, gatekeepers. Yeah, gatekeepers. Yeah. With gatekeepers, I believe they are there. They are there. The yeah. industry is very tricky, and I don't blame them at the end of the day. Some somehow. Yeah. You know, um, because as as now I'm looking at it from a production company's perspective. Yes. If you've got actors that you work with and you work well with those actors, if you have another project, there's no way you wouldn't think of them again. You yeah. know, yeah. which now does what brings the repetition of actors being in the same project over and over. Yes. We we, we don't see that relationship. You, you you don't see the relationship between No Chill and Brendan as the director yes. saying, "I love your work. You listen to me. You oh, take instructions very yes. well." Yeah. You know, you don't always complain much about payments. You don't you you don't cause problems within the pro, uh, yes. production so every time i do a project or something i'll always think of you first mm. versus going and finding someone new whom i still need to learn get used to and whatnot mm. so yes i would agree to that there are gatekeepers you know there, there are people that will try to not um, give you platforms or opportunities to go in it. and it's for their own safety it's for their own safety at the end of the day yeah. as well yeah, yeah it's for their own safety but that that doesn't mean it's closed. It's it's open. It's open. The pie is too it's big. It's the relationships you and your your obviously your competence. It, exactly, and how you also push yourself out there, you know. Because a lot of people want opportunities, no show, but they're not working hard for them. <laughs> you know, you'd want great or bigger opportunities, but look at yourself and ask yourself: Do I qualify for that? Am I ready for that opportunity? A lot of people don't do that. Ah, no, she doesn't want to work with me, but are you at a level to work with no she? Mm. That's deep, man. 
So now, I'm obviously, man, everything that we do here in this world, there are challenges. Sure. And I'm sure you, you know this. And what are the challenges that you have faced and which you're still facing now? Because you're growing, yeah. you know. People who don't have challenges, are st- they, they are st- they, they're stuck. Yeah. You know, they're not doing anything. They're too comfortable. But I don't believe that you you don't have challenges and you never had challenges up until this point. What are the sure. challenges from personal perspective and also in terms of the industry itself? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, personally, my biggest challenge that I still have mm. is being an artist and doing what I do takes a lot of time. I don't even have time for my family. Yeah. I don't have time for myself. Yeah. Um, I would have to make certain decisions like, Brandon, this weekend, you have to go home. This weekend comes, get a phone call. Brandon, go geek. Here's money, whatever. Now yeah. I have to always choose between go make more money. So when you go home, you go home with a lot of money yeah. or just go home and use what you have and it ends there. Yeah. So, and I know someone else might say, nah, it's a choice. Yes, it's a choice. Cause at the end of the day, I've already made that sacrifice to say, I'm moving away from family to go find my own life and do what I need to do. Sure. But to be honest, that kills me. You know, um, sometimes I'd find myself crying while taking a shower saying, God, it's so much. You're blessing me so much. But at the same time, there's something you're taking away from me, which is me being with my family all the time. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing I want for sure. So I would say that's my biggest challenge personally. Mm-hmm. Um, artistically, uh, I've always wanted to just become the best at what I do every day. I work to do better than I did yesterday. Yeah. So my biggest challenge was before I did not have too many responsibilities. So my main focus was just becoming the best. Yes. Then now one of the challenges that I have is making money from the best that I claim to be. Yes. You know? So yeah. yeah, the biggest challenge is actually generating income from my creative skills. Your creative. Yeah. Yes. Consistently. So, cause money does come and there are places where I can extend myself to get that, you know, income, but <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. that's one challenge. One of the challenges that as a content creator uh, alone, I was I was talking to um, the original careless yesterday with regards to you know as a content creator and you don't have something aside, it, mm. it's, it's it's a bit challenging in terms of True. making the income, you know, and it's something that obviously the government can't do anything about it. You know, you think they can't do? You think they don't want to do something about it? <laughs> Listen, I don't. The government, uh, personally, this is my opinion, right? Mm. The government can only do as much as they can, but not to everyone. Mm. Uh, and the other thing is, you have to go school way. Mm. The government is the government for the system. Okay. So now you, you are using your talent, you're using your skill. It's gonna be so hard, man. You know, because. Uh, there are certain things that you are not doing. You know, you mentioned earlier when we were talking that you worked for 24 days and then you went to your boss. For like 10 years. Yeah, and you, you went and said, I can't do this. Why? You, you were against the system. The system of going yeah. to work from 6 to, to 6 you know, is the system. But yeah. if there's something within you, the spirit that says, no, nah, this is not for me, then you have to suffer the consequences, unfortunately. Sure. When you pray for rain... Be ready for mud. You understand? So I even mentioned to you, man, Uri, if you want to be in the system, be there and be comfortable. Mm. But if you want to go out of the system, just know that it's a mountain. Mm. You know, it's a mountain that you need to climb. Are you okay with that? So you decide what you want, you know. But I'll tell you, if you don't want to be in the system, you go in. To suffer. You work 10 times as hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's how it is. That's so, true. So, um, that, that one, I was just adding t- on top of what you're saying and you should expect that. So it's just an advice also, you know, even me, you know, this podcast, I've changed so many yeah. uh, productions because of those up and downs, you know, people want to do what they want me to do. Mm-hmm not what I want to do. Mm. You understand? So it's it's going to be a challenge. You're going to be dealing with people. You're going to also be dealing with the systems and the gatekeepers. But we're going to get it right. Man. And I respect, by the way, I, I actually respect the fact that you, 
you can say no to what you don't want to yeah. do. I'm very big on that too. Saying yes, most of the time, trust me, it means that you don't really know what you want. Fact. You're all over. You're all over. All over. You're on the system. <laughs> <laughs> You're on yeah. the system. And and you mentioned figures that played a big role. Um, you mentioned Mr. Mulauzi. That yeah, he played ah, a big role. man. Yeah. <laughs> that he played a big role. How, how so? How did he play a role? And what did you get out of it? And what did yeah. you do? And looking back to even say, that guy changed my life. How did it? Yo, man. Just just mentioning him makes me so happy. The thing is, <laughs> I don't think Ilbunu Malauti knows the impact that he's made in my life. To him, it's nothing. Like, it's light. Because mm -hmm. I would come to him even now and be like, Khotman, mm -hmm. I know this happened years ago, but thank you, man. You changed my life. Yes. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, Brandon. You know, like, it's nothing to him. He didn't do anything. Yeah. But what happened was, how I met Kibonu Malawuti is I was doing my first year in TUT. Yes. And um, he was there with other comedians. And they asked who wants to crack a joke. Yeah. And raised our hands. It was first show orientations. Mm. Then raised my hand with the others. They chose five of us, came on stage. I cracked one joke each, mm. cracked the joke. And then he came to me. He's like, yo, can I see you when we are done? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So after we're done, the orientation is done. Everyone leaves. He calls me. He's like, yo, would you like to do stand up comedy, man? I have places that I'm actually running and I can plug you there. Mm. You know, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? He's yeah. like, okay, cool. Then he started, um, I didn't even know, but there's this thing where on Wednesdays we go and rehearse. So we meet with other comedians, we write material, yeah. and then we perform for each other, we create each other and whatnot. So Giriboni started taking me from then, groomed me with these platforms. He would personally drive me to these events and tell me, oh, Brandon, you have a performance on Saturday in Murula San in Pretoria. Yeah. Oh, okay, Giri, yeah, I'm going to fetch you at four. Then at four, he's there. On the way, he's like, yo, Brandon, let me hear your set. Then I crack jokes. He laughs if it's funny. If it's not, he tells me, ha, ah, no, 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 that's not funny. Yeah. Change it. Yeah. You know, and I'd work on it same time there. Tell it, tell it to me while we, while he's driving. Yeah. You know, so he, he really made sure that I always delivered to him. It wasn't a matter of, ah, you'll see on the way. No. Yeah. But it really held my hand. I traveled a lot with him. My first experience of sleeping in different hotels traveling was with, mm. um, through Kiriboni Mulawuti, him taking me to all these different places. I met Lebu Kunguluza through Kiriboni Mulawuti while yeah. performing in Plumfontein. Yeah. Chilling with him just like this, telling yeah. me how he made his first million at 27, advising me about property. Yeah. So, you know, all of that for me, I believe it wasn't going to be possible if it wasn't for Kiriboni's um, input in my life. And that yeah. guy is a genius, man. That guy is he's amazing. I mean, even Trevor Noah mentioned him at an interview saying thank you to him. Because at wow. some point he also plugged Trevor at a club. I think it was in Joburg. Yeah. But yeah, Trevor Noah also wouldn't have done certain things if it wasn't for Giddy So shout out, shout out to Giddy man. Mr. Morales. I mean, we need people like that, bro. I Too mean, much. It's all about, we should all eat. You know, yeah. we should all eat. Yeah. And it's all about impacting. True. You know? And I'm, I'm glad that it, it, you can then reflect back because some people forget, you know, mm -hmm. you can then reflect back and say, shout out to you, my, my guy. And you're still going, man. You're going to get on top. Just of don't course. worry. And, you know, let, let's, let, let me hear your impact of education, our educational system, uh, not in a broader way, but just in your personal space, how did it play a role for you to be able to maneuver around this industry and even to become the person you are today? How did it play a role in education? It? Yeah, education. Going to TUT, studying drama, yeah. being around that environment of yeah. university and all these kind of things. And even the information that you've learned there, because mm -hmm. uh, there's theater, also you are learning yes. and there's school. So when you combine all this thing, how, which role did this thing play and how important are they? Yeah, first things first, it's very important. I'd like to say that education is very important mm -hmm. and i understand we all look at things from different perspectives sure but i believe it's very important uh, why am i saying that yeah i was just a typical gussie boy yeah who didn't know anything sure i met someone who knew better than me but after i went to school i felt like i don't really need her anymore not in that way to say i don't need you now i'm in school no 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 yeah. but I started learning so much that me and her started having similar conversations. So, sure. you know, it wasn't a matter of her teaching me anymore all the time, but it was a matter of now we are talking about the art, yeah, you know? Sure. 
so exposure first of all it opened me up to a lot of things uh dance i can dance i can take dance i write i direct i um i'm a four times award-winning director now you know yeah. all of that and all of that came because of school if i did not go to school i was just gonna think i'm a typical actor and gee from yeah. a guy i'm not an actor you know but going to school opened up more doors for me today I'm, i do more directing and writing more than acting okay i'm lying because i act every day with content but <laughs> yeah. professionally so yeah i do more directing more than acting yeah and I would never, ever would have found out that I could do that if it wasn't for school. Yeah. So it really, really, really plays a huge role within shaping my art and shaping how I move. Sure. Um, also, the business side of being an artist, a lot of people don't get that no chill. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of artists don't, first of all, they don't see themselves as brand. They don't understand the business side of, I am a company, me as Brandon, I'm, yeah. I'm a brand. So I have to run myself as a company sure. in order for me to be able to, do certain things and get money from what I do. Sure. You know, so yeah. that I learned from school as well. There was a subject in Yana there that teaches us about money and yeah. how to actually represent yourself and all of that. So yeah, it, 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 it is very important and it really did play a huge role in my life into shaping who I am today and how I maneuver. I know that's perfect, man. That's good. I love the way you articulated it. It's very yeah. <laughs> nice. And <laughs> let's, you, let's now go to, to the social media. You know, I wanted yeah. to start with you. Obviously, social media is a tool. Yeah. How did social media then, obviously in the beginning, uh, you were just doing all these things outside, offline, you know, yeah. then social media came and how did you, or how did your whole plan change after you, you, you come across social media? How did it shape your career mm. and this, you as a person? Okay. Uh, social media. Ne? Yeah. <laughs> so I used to post on Instagram and YouTube first. Yeah way back yes like way back if you can check my and i never deleted them my old videos i think they are from 2013 14 sure. on youtube yeah so um back then it was only just snowballs or speaking i was just trying to be funny yeah had a lot of makeup on dress like i was just trying to be funny as much as i can yeah but None of that happened, you know, mm. like no one noticed, whatever. I put YouTube is difficult when you start because I'll post a video and get five likes or five views after five years. I'm like, ha, so it's one person a year, you know, so it was tough until TikTok came. So when TikTok came, I saw the platform. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Mm. Um, let me post the same content I have already. Yeah. On TikTok. So when I started, I didn't have to create new content. Sure. I just reposted no chili and I was posting like three, five videos a day. Mm. It blew started yeah. going people started loving i'm like how oh, what was wrong all this time because <laughs> i've been doing the same thing why yeah. now you know yeah so yeah it grew started getting more traction um started wanting to develop the content more because we are pale, pale, pale. Yes, I was like, hey, yes. now i need content you need more. Do? so yeah. yeah then i started um doing what i did you know thinking about my content because i really thought about it before i can start with it you know i wanted to make it have that episodic feel to sure. it not just a video yeah you know and i achieved that mm. so yeah, yeah so it did it change you did it play a big role i mean do you think if it, you didn't get introduced or maybe come across social media you'd be where you are today mm, not this fast not this fast honestly social media did help a lot no. um to attract more brands into my life uh to put me a bit more out there as well because I won't lie, I was popular before I became famous. Mm. I was very popular in certain places. People who knew that, yo, this is Brandon, he's a dope art, art he's a dope art, art, yeah. art. Yeah. But I was not famous. The, the world didn't know about me. You sure. know? So, yeah, today there's, I don't know, close to 17 countries on YouTube alone that streams my work in South Africa as well. You know, there's a lot. So, yeah, I would say social media really did open up that scope of people knowing and understanding me as an artist. Yeah. So let's focus on one of your skits or the series. You know, you've got the, the Crazy Family TBO, uh, which obviously a lot of people love that. Yeah. Uh, take me through the uh, creative process mm-hmm. of that content from the start up until the finish. Okay, so the creative process in terms of creating one video or from where yes. you started the content? From the creative perspective, creating that video. 
you know and yeah. yeah it's the one video because i mean there's just so many things involved there yeah, yeah. which are art yes that is i perceive yeah so for me the most important thing is storyline i always think to myself how will this um go through so how do i even derive or get to that idea yeah. is i would think about my past life because my content is basically just my childhood i'm reliving it through content yeah um, so I would first things first, either think about my past life or see something that makes me think about something like see kids play. I'm like, ah, I used to do that when I was yeah, young. Yeah. I'm going to do this. So this is the main thing. So if maybe kids are playing my mm. frotana and then one of them starts being mad and then we are, so I and then yeah. they run away. Mm. I'm like, I had that when I was a kid. How can I turn this into a storyline, a story, not sure. just a video, but a story. Yeah. You know, then I would start it from um, a certain point, let it grow, build it up, just like a fall, you know? Mm. So let it build it up, have the climax, and then take it down. The three film plot structures, you know, the beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. So every time I do it, I do it like that. And then when I have to shoot, it depends. It will mm. take me probably 45 minutes or an hour to shoot um, everything. Then it takes me another 40 minutes to edit. And then, yeah. yeah. So you write then first. You write, right? Sometimes I'll write only the idea, not the script. Oh, Then so the script, I play it out in my head. In your head, yeah. Because yeah. it would take longer if I had to sit down to and write, write every yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 But that's how I do it. So the creative process would start from that. Either looking at kids do something, or I just think of something that once happened when I was young. Or being at home sometimes when I visit. My mom is snowballs because every character they exists mm. in a way. Okay, not every, but eighty percent of them they exist. You know, so wow. yeah. That's 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 when we say art exists, man. That's that's art. Art man. is beauty. Nah. Art is life. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the passion even when you're saying it. Yeah. I mean, um, n- now the characters you mentioned characters, man. You know, yes, there's this, and you put them all together. I'm thinking already for a video which is maybe less than two minutes, mm-hmm. you spend more than two hours. Yes, sir. And yes, people sir. don't understand it. They don't. They don't. And it's difficult <laughs> to do it the way I do it. No chill. You know, I don't want to lie. It's very difficult. Imagine having to shoot for eight characters. It's a three minute video. And the process that we used to shoot, I have to shoot one character, finish it, shoot the other one, finish it. It's eight. By the time I get to number seven, I forgot what I said to number one or how, you know, so it's complicated. And editing. Yeah. Now putting because oh, everything together. <laughs> Sometimes guys, I have to delete some shots. Guys, I feel like content creators will be the most paid people in this country. Please. Because Please. more than just making you guys laugh, we're also solving most of your your, your problems. You know, you, 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 most of the people are not happy. Facts. But when they, you know, submit to our content, they consume it. They them. forget about those things, you know. Yeah. However, man, um, I think it's going to change this industry. We're going to make sure that we change it. We're going to, this, it's us letting people know. Because some people, they just take things too lightly. So sure. now this is the information is going to them. Sure. So then next time when you see Brandon doing his content, appreciate it. Mm. You know, yes, maybe you're not paying him, but that, that feel of appreciating yeah. the art. We, we don't have that thing of appreciating <laughs> art in our country. I think understanding as well. Nah. They don't really understand it here. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we'll, we'll solve it. You know, this yeah. podcast is about bringing Slowly content creators to, to hear the stories behind. Because what you see is the finished product, you yes, know, sir. the behind the scenes. But the challenge is now you are on social media. Then you're coming. There will be criticism. There'll be those comments, yeah. you know, and um, how do you how do you keep going without having to deal with negativity? Obviously, negativity exists. Yeah. How do you maneuver around it? Around it, you know. To be honest with me, I don't know if I should call it blessings or what, but I hardly receive hate comments. Yeah, because first of all, my content it's just lovable to a lot of people, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. I mean, there's someone who commented, my one year old child loves watching you so much. And when I check the stats, my oldest person that watch, watches my content, my oldest consumer that watches my content, that, that consumes my content is 55. 
you know so mm. i would say i have a fan base from the age of one up now until, until 55 you it, know? it means it's relatable and now let's Too talk much. about the zulu language yes sir why I grew up so weird. You don't ask us. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say my fetch. So, yeah. so do you think uh, even the language is playing a big part into the the love mm. from the people, right? It does. It does. It is, although I do acknowledge the fact that it also has a lot of negative factors. Yeah. Language is very much important, especially for content creators. I've realized this. If you want to grow quicker in your content or to have more people following you, mm. make sure your content is good first. Yes. And then make it English. You'll never go wrong. Because with English, you're opening up your your audience yeah. to white people as well, to foreign countries, you know. Yeah. I still get people from Namibia laughing, but still saying, I didn't understand half the video, but it's funny. Please add subtitles, yes. you know. So me doing it in Zulu, I know for a fact it affects the growth. It's limiting you somehow. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, that's that's how it is, because Ikasi is Kulumayo. Now, the way I grew up, Kule is Kulumi Zulu. Yeah, and what lessons? I'm just gonna check if uh, my community asks something. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what what challenges do, 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 do you are you facing now, social media wise? Mm -hmm. You know that you feel like people should know about. Even people who wants to start. Obviously, you are inspiring in in the mm -hmm. process. So now they'll see you and say, "Wow, I also want to have these numbers." Mm -hmm. But obviously, you go through a lot of challenges. What challenges did you face, and how did you overcome them? If there there are any, okay. yeah, yeah, L online, sure. online. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I should say I have challenges. I mean, I'm 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 good. No, I'm comfortable. I mean, I'm happy with everything. Yeah, yeah. The only challenge that I would have most of the time is, I don't know if it's a challenge or a problem that I have, but. I believe strongly in collaboration and working with other people. Yeah. You know, Casper said in his song, he said, we're doing okay so far, but this ish can get better if we realize that all we need to do is help each other as long as we are alive. So I would meet certain creators and I would say, dog, let's collaborate. And mm. some would say, nah, I don't collaborate. Or some would come up with whatever, you know? Yeah. So I think for me, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Having content creators that sees numbers and they think they've made it mm. and they haven't even stepped not even one toe into the professional space. Cause I, I started from the professional space. Yeah. You know, I make money from what I do full time. I live every month from the money I make from art mm. and me bringing someone into my life is me trying to show them that, Hey man, I love what you do on social media. Mm. Let me show you how things work on the other side of art. If you love it, make money with me. If you don't continue in your space, cause I'm very picky and choosy with who I bring into my space. <laughs> Know. You know, you mentioned in this, and there's this culture. I don't know if it's TikTok culture, and obviously they're gonna come for me if yeah. you know. But I mean, the truth must be there. I feel like this this thing of grouping, uh, you know, there are TikTokers yeah. who can only chill with you and if do certain, certain things level. with you know. Mm. But why is it like that? Collaboration is the key. Trust me, no chill. If only these creators can understand the power of collaboration. If only you can understand the power of collaboration, we can do a lot together. We can win a lot. I mean, this is collaboration, bro. Of course. Of course. And I mean, we are winning already. It, it's, you know I mean? I, I, I'm not losing. You are not losing. Instead, we are Fence. gaining. You know, yeah. cross. Even we're going to cross exchange Fence. of followers. Yeah. Now they're going to get to know. Yours, they're going to get to know yeah. me. We are both winning. But... Yeah. It's, it's all about it, man. And it's quite sad because I meet a lot, no chill. I don't want to lie, man. I meet a lot, you know. There are people that just, their numbers get to their heads, you know what I mean? And they just feel like, I'm on a million, I'm verified. So I'm, I'm yeah, Kalisa, I'm Iskatul. And in my heart, I'm like, but what is that million doing for you? Can I be honest, brutally, million followers, guys, and being verified doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. Trust me. <laughs> and I'm not saying this in an attacking way. I don't. Yeah. I can't attack anyone. You yeah. know. I'm just enlightening other people. You're educating. Educating. You know. Because there's someone who's looking at this person has one million followers. Mm. They are looking yeah. around their lives, and most of them they are liars. Because they're trying to live uh, the life mm -hmm. that reflects the number of followers. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to act like one million followers. Yeah, it makes you... Uh, <laughs> we don't get rich by being famous. Mm -hmm. We do not. Making money online, it's a skill. 
Yes, sir. You need to learn it. It's a learnable skill. Yes, sir. You know? And if you are not selling, you cannot convince me that you are making a lot of money. Mm. Trust me. Mm. And I, I know. I know, guys. You know, I'm a content creator. Yeah. I know this. Yes, you can make money with brands. I've managed to work with over 40 brands in SA, bro. Mm. Big brands. You know, they will, they, they, they will come because it's your season. Yes. You are trending now. And they don't understand the part. <laughs> they don't understand the part. <laughs> but trend now, be that thing now, brands will come. Come, the come. new kid will always excite the crowd And you more. go down because there's always going to be a new child, a yeah. kid in the building. You know, Fact. you need to have something that keeps giving you money every month without Fact. you having to work with brands. Mm -hmm. But how many of our content creators are doing that? Bang -bang. Very Bang -bang. few. And now there's a thing that brands do as well, but I think they've been doing it where they have specific people they work with, no chill. So if I am CLC and I've worked with you before, I'll always tell with you, no chill, don't worry. It's Whenever agencies. there's something for CLC, I got it's you. It's agencies. They, they, if you, 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 you are good in terms of yeah it's you the deliver. same it goes back to the acting if i know you and you don't give yes, me problems uh, i'm gonna always it. come to you you know all yes. the gigs i have worked with so many brands because of that mm -hmm. different agencies me too they say hey, that guy he can do this yeah, fast fast his insights he submit them within days mm -hmm. that you know if you are you are, you are easy to work with you all gonna get yes, all sir. these things but there will be a time where it goes down a lot. So you need something like a book. I wrote a book myself. Yeah. These are sales every day. Even if I make one thousand a day or three fifty or whatever, it's something. It's something you yeah. understand. You need to get to the level where you know it's no longer about those likes. It's something that now it you are selling. Mm. Yeah, money comes from sales, bro. So now the other misconception. I want to know about the misconceptions about the people. On social media, TikTok, YouTube, all this. What what do you think is the most um, mis misconception about social media itself? Um, what people don't think or uh, don't know, or mm. they think this is the reality of it. But when I know, nah, it's not. It's not like that. Okay, I think I would have two or three of those. Yeah, please. Man. Number one for me would be. Not everyone on social media is making the money that they pretending to look like they're making. A lot of people are fake on social media. Perfect. Um, if you're going to make content about lifestyle, mm. let it be real. So that we buy. I don't know if you know God's Butler. He's a friend of mine who works yeah. for DSTV. Very tight. He, he does vlogging. I believe in my personal perspective, uh, point of view, sorry, mm. he's one of the best in essay that I've ever seen that yeah. does vlogs. You know? Yes, yes. He's real with the thing. He, he, you know, he shows where he stays. It's a shack. Give my melody. Yeah. He doesn't hide anything. He doesn't fake anything. Fish, I love that. You know, because that's more motivating for me to a kid who that's like, I can do this too. Yes. I can do this Ish. too. You Ish. know what I mean? Ish. So first of all, they lie about making the money that they claim to be making. Yeah. And I know that. I mean, we both, we all know. Yeah. And then the other misconception I think there is on social media is that as much as you might have a lot of people of fame, so to speak, mm. but that doesn't mean you've made it. Mm. Fame means nothing. It's actually depressing if you have fame and you can't maintain the mm. fame look. <sighs> you need to make money in yes. order for you to be able to be happy within your fame. <sighs> you know, you know, like I said, there's a lot of these people that we know now. It's going to be shocking to hear that someone killed themselves, but they seem to be very happy on social media mm -hmm. because it's that. The pressure. It, you understand? And it moves. They don't, they, <laughs> they, they can lie and say, no, uh, fame, pressure. That thing moves, no chill. That How do you even sleep knowing that you got 30,000 uh, likes, but whatever that you posted is not yours? Yeah. How do you sleep? Yeah. Can you sleep? Yeah. Okay, you are building a brand based on lies, mm. and now you are growing. Mm. How do you maintain? <laughs> that, that's that, that's where the, the sleepless nights come from. You think, how can I maintain Guys, this now? Guys, don't be like that. Be authentic. authentic. Be authentic. Mm. It's something that I said in one of the videos that I made. It's, it's like a gold now. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. We're living in, the, in this world full of AI. Artificial, artificial, fake, fake, fake. Yeah. If you want to thrive in this economy, guys, be authentic. It sells. 
Mm. To make you more than just money. Trust. Even the reputation you're gonna gain out of it. But it, it, this is just me saying this, right? It's about you. Let let's dive into your asset, table production. Man, yes, I was so impressed by just looking at your work, bro. Uh, you I'm produce, hungry. you write, you edit. The choosing of the talent that you include in your production when you do short films. I was watching last night, I was like, I don't know. I mean, I don't even, I'm saying this from good art. I don't even think our mainstreams deserve mm -hmm. your art, you know, because it's just unique. Yeah. I don't think, like we say, we go back, people don't appreciate art. I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an art person. You understand? I, I love art. I appreciate it. Man. <laughs> okay. You know, let, let, let's... What is the whole... What, what motivated you to come with table production? You know, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's your, it's your pub and, 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 and meat. Yes. That's what you live for. But what is the vision behind it? Okay, so um, first of all, how it started was when I started being popular in high school, mm. they, what made me popular is I used to be part of, a, after I did theatre, I started being on Soweto TV, doing the show Sisters, yeah. started doing MCing at school and doing MCs. Other schools would now um, call me and my friend Tapele to come MC at their school. So there was a lot of popularity. Mm. And then I thought to myself, I'd like this popularity to be managed but i don't i couldn't find someone to manage me at that time because kikokas man and people don't care about these things mm. you know so i thought to myself um i'm gonna call myself tbo productions because yeah. tbo is my initials actually yes. Brandon Oliphant. yes so i had four names but tbo was like this one stands out it identifies me and even yeah. if you look at my logo it's an afro man you know yeah. so yeah. that afro man comes from me because i have an afro myself sure. and, you know yeah so there was a time where I got a, a, a deal with a company, which I won't mention because it didn't end well. Yeah. But they needed to pay me. Yeah. So when they needed to pay me, they were like, okay, because uh, I sent the, the email, the proposal through TBO Productions. So I wrote TBO Productions Presents. I wrote the email. They're like, we love this. We love it so much. Sure. We agree. We're going to pay you the money you want. Can you send us your banking details? I sent my Capitec banking details. They're like, no, 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 no. We talking to TBO Productions, not Brendan. I'm like, yeah, but it's me. It's my company. It's mine. They're like, no, you propose as the company. So we would like to pay the company. That time I didn't know about companies and stuff. I was yeah. like, yes, I need to do something. I spoke to a few people. They told me, go register one. It doesn't take time. Yeah. Then I went, I registered the company. And then that's when it became official in 2017. Yeah. Um, but before I registered it, it was running, I think, for three, four years already without mm. it being registered, just mm. the name and the branding. Yeah. So after I did that, um, registered the company and then I started off as just an MCing company and motivational speaking company. Yeah. Because at that time, as much as I was popular, but I had a few people that looked up to me. So yeah. I used to do motivation a lot. So. Sure. Yeah. So um, the main vision of the company is to actually build a corporate uh, what do I mean by corporate? Right now, what's existing with the company, we have TBO merchandise, which is clothes. Mm -hmm. We have TBO water. There's water that we supply as well. Mm -hmm. We have, I have a TBO fast food. You can find it on Instagram. It's just that it's closed for now, but it was operational. We closed it last year. Yeah. Uh, we want to reopen it again this year, but it's an establishment. Mm -hmm. We have TBO fast food. I want to, you know, venture into transportation, TBO properties. So it's like, Big vest. Yes. They have cleaning. They sure. have bank. Sure. That's exactly what we're trying to do with the vision of TBO Productions yeah. and also in the entertainment, shooting films, being in theater and doing all of that. So we're basically an entertainment and digital company mm. that offers services or renders services to artists and the normal. Um, how, how, do, how, how can one invest in, 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 you know, cause that vision right there, bro, it's, it's everything. It's everything. And, and you know, for it to happen. And obviously in this case, you need people to achieve yeah. that. You understand? You need people who understand and who also want to be partners yeah. and investors in it. So how, how, is there any opportunity or open chance for anyone who would like to invest in what you're doing to mm. be part of your vision? 
Yes, yes, of course, because um, we're doing quite a lot uh, mm-hmm. with property. We bought land last year in Limpopo. We're trying to build uh, at Sikukuni. Yeah. So there's a friend of mine who's in construction and whatnot. So yeah. we're planning on building something there yeah. for property to start off the property idea. So mm-hmm. I think if anyone would be interested in investing, they just need to know uh, what part of the company they would like to invest in. If you're sure. in entertainment, which side in entertainment? Are mm. you a theater person? Are you a television person? Mm. Then we tell you what we're working on. You can invest, either be a producer or whatever. Mm. If it's water, we tell you how water run, people we supply to, and then you invest in that. So you just need to choose the discipline yeah. or the one that you think you would love to invest in. Then send us an email or give me a call or DM me, and then we'll talk about logistics and everything then we move forward with it yeah that's dope man i mean i I love to be i'm saying i love to be part of the entertainment you know i kind of feel like your vision somehow correlates with mine you know and like i told you that i need um a division whereby their talents be managed you know yeah uh being mentored and being shown the path to take, you know, to simplify their lives and their careers, you know, through education and through yeah. experience, you understand. So I I was watching your short film. So now, with regards to the short films, where do you see yourself going? Okay, so basically, I never studied film, first of all, mm. but I did drama. So we had, yeah, when you do drama and TUT, they give you just, I think, three months, yana, four months yana of knowledge in film. Yeah. But how I learned more in film, that's why I'm so blessed that I studied drama. Yeah. Because, okay, that's a topic for another day. Let me not derail from it. Yeah. So the plan with what I'm trying to do with films is with the short films for us, me and my partner, Nolo, Mm. is we take it as practice. So to other people, it looks like, oh, this is dope. They've worked. But for us, it's like, it's just practice for the big projects. So every year we try to shoot at least two or three feature projects and then we um, sell them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we do short films to keep on practicing so that we don't have the same mentality like most filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Why are you not shooting? I'm waiting for funding. We don't want to do that. Because we always believe in the idea that if you can't invest in your dreams, why should anyone else invest in them? If you can put 500 that you have and buy a mic or invest in your own dreams, but you expect a big company to invest in you, that that, that, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, and true. you want to wait for the longest time. Damn, man. Yeah. Because obviously I'm one of those people who who are, who are saying that this, this is the production that I feel like if it's well maintained and can go to our mainstreams, it That's the be, plan. It's the plan. Yes, yes. Because we already have a series, Crazy and Homeless. Yeah. Uh, it was under Telcom One. I don't know if you know the platform, Telcom One. Yeah. 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 So it was bought by Telcom. And right. then after being bought by Telcom, stayed on the platform for eight months. It was trending for six months. There's international content. There's national content on the platform. But we were trending for six months on number one. And you were the producer, writer, and... and... I choreographed. I co-wrote with Nolo and I directed and he also directed other episodes because it was 10 episodes. So we used to share the work. So what was the name? Crazy and Homeless. Damn. Crazy should and should homeless. Should yeah. should so should. right now it's bought by SABC. It's under SABC one. After the telecom one, SABC was like, we love this. They bought it. I so mean, now I, it's there. I feel like you can back more deals with SABC plus also. I mean, they need content, bro. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, true. And your content, to be honest, I, bro, I don't know. I don't even know what to say, but your work is, is good, man. It's Thank you. good. It's just even not yeah. enough to even say, bro. but n- let's focus on the people that, are acting there are those professional actors or you you, you train them in the process you just pick yeah. and say okay do this because they, they're also good too much yeah yeah so who are those people are they actors or you you just tell them how to do because the way they do it's like it's so professional yeah. everything is just professional so it depends i mix um most of them i'd say 80 percent of the actors are actually people that i train my students Mm. Um, because I have classes, as I said earlier on, for mm. acting, physical theatre, just teaching people the art and the craft of acting. Yeah. Uh, then others are professionals. Like if you watch Crazy and Homeless, uh, there's Ngulego from Deep City. He was also part of my classes, actually. Is it? Yeah. So 
Damn. Yeah, we mix from the industry, take a bit, then take also from the students because they know and they've been getting the training. So to them, it's practical. For me, it's also just practice for the big project. So everyone is winning in a way. How do you attract these people? It's not like, bro, like, it's not like table production is this production. How do yeah. you pay these people? How do you convince them? How do you negotiate with them? Do you pay them or yeah. it's more of let's do this and they say, okay, let's go. I think, you know, I've realized something and I always preach this and I hope when I'm going to say it now, there's someone out there who's going to take it. Mm. There's power in being great at what you do, not good, but great at what you do. No chill. If you are too good at what you do, people just want to associate mm. first before mm. anything else. They just want to associate. So if there's value that you've created for yourself, it's easy to exchange that value with someone, even though there's no money involved. Mm. For example, we don't sell short films. We're not making money from it. And we are clear with the actors to say, this is a five minute video, who will buy it? We can't make money from it, but we will invest money in it. Cause to shoot a five minute, 10 minute movie would cost us probably a budget of like 1.5, 1,500. Then we shoot it the whole day until probably the next morning. That 1.5 covers transportation, the food. We just make sure they don't spend anything. Yeah. They just come and do what they need to do. They go. Then when it's a huge project and they buy the project, then we have payments and contracts that we can give to the actors to say, okay, here we are eating buffet too. Let's do it like this. Cause it's different. I mean, we trying to, we trying to be the ones that empowers people, highest people. So to get to a point where now we have a consistent founder that's like, Brandon, you want to shoot a film? Here's a million. Brandon, you want to shoot a film? Here's how much, how much. Yeah. Before we get to that level, we'll work with people that are interested in working with us. Mm. And they benefit, even though they don't get paid, but they benefit a lot, a lot. Because yeah. they can use the footage that we we we, we shooting or the films as they are show reels if they are mm. actors. They can also um it's, it's a big thing because what we do is not easy and it's 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 too good for our level. Mm. I don't know if I make sense. Hey, bro, it's and you're you're telling the yeah. truth. <laughs> you know, it's so just the power of being, being great. great. I'm telling, I've opened doors with that, no chill. I've done things, I've went to places where I had to pay, but I never paid because of what I showed them. To show them what I can do and what uh, I can do for them with what I can do, and I, they were like, "Leave the money. Let's just do this." I think, I think it, in, in, in a in the other way, it's a gift. It, the Bible in Proverbs eighteen sixteen says that a gift of a man opens doors for him. Trust me, I've seen that, guys. I've seen that <laughs> firsthand. Like, firsthand. like, and it it says when it continues, it says it bringeth you before great men. Trust me. You know, your gift alone, this, you're not buying anything. There's no money involved. No money. No money, no chill. No chill. I've worked in places, man, where I had meetings with important people. I was nervous. And I sit down and I'm like, hi, greetings. Uh, my name is Brendan Oliver. And they laugh. Oh, who doesn't know you? Who know you, man? When they say that and I walk out of that room, I close my eyes. I'm like, God, you, 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 you do your job. Mm. So it's the name. It's the work. If it wasn't for that, I don't even think these people would be that excited. Because immediately they do that, I know the deal is sealed. Already they're excited to see me. Yeah, happy that I mean, I'm in the room. What do you it's have sealed. to say? You no. understand? So if I did not work as hard as I'm working to become as good as I am with whatever that I do. And I'm not saying um, I'm perfect. No, I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. There's still mistakes. But within my learning, I'm great at it. Damn. That's powerful, man. Yeah. That is very powerful. Like, I mean... Guys, this podcast exists, mm. to be honest, ne? for you guys to see the greatness side of these people that you enjoy their content. I always say that more than just focusing on the content, focus on the mind that is producing the content. Please. The brand. The brand. The art. Go beyond, you know. Always go beyond. Art. Always go beyond because you will miss a lot. Some people are just following but they're missing a lot. They're yeah. missing lessons that can change their lives. If you follow me, I always tell my community, the no chillers, don't be a follower. Be my student. Mm. You know, there's something that I know that is bringing the results that I have today. Mm. You understand? There's no way I can write a book if I don't know. True. Come Trust me. Somewhere. A book is something that can go to the whole world. Mm. Imagine if someone reads and says, oh, you are lying. Mm. You see, it's a risk. 
to even write a book. A big one. <laughs> you understand? Because someone can correct you, chief. But I wrote this based on the results and the experience. Mm. You understand? So we need to get to that level where we stop being followers and we become students of the people that inspires us mm. or we enjoy their content. That's that's just one thing, just to support what you say, that being great is so powerful. Too much. You know, it's what drives what you do all over. You yes, know. Sir. So it's it's an, another thing to to talk about the industry, which is the content creation and the film and acting industry. Do you think they correlate somehow? Do you think as a content creator, does it give you a leverage or, or, or an advantage to see yourself in the big, big screens? Do, do even these people that uh, chose the auditions, do they even look at the numbers of followers these days? Because I feel like this one question that a lot of people think, especially influencers, yeah. influencers, they think that, ah, I can just go there, they know me. Is it playing a role? Is, is it happening? Yeah. Honestly, honestly, I would say it, it is. It depends, right? It depends. Because remember, at the end of the day, we have the production and we have the actors or the, 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 the yeah, the actors. Yeah. The production's most important thing is for them to create a product and get as many views as possible. Because all these soapies are fighting for views. All of them, trust me. As long as it's on TV, they are fighting for views. They are fighting for prime time. Mm. That's why I heard today in the morning, um, coming here on, on radio, mm. they're saying Skim Sam is coming back. It's going to be playing at half past seven at prime time because it's the most viewed in South Africa. Yeah. I didn't know I that. I thought Uzalo was TV. the most views, uh, viewed. Uzalo. I don't ah, know. They said it's Skim Sam. That's why they're taking it to half seven now because half seven, it's prime time. That's mm. when people are back from work. We are seated. We are eating. We are watching oh, TV. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's prime time. It's the most important slot on TV. You know, so like on radio, the yeah. most important slot is the afternoon drive because people are coming back from school, you know, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, now I lost my train of thought again. The influencer. The influence. Yeah. So the last time I went to auditions personally uh, was a few years ago, I think four or five years. Mm. And that was my last. I was like, I'm never doing this again. Yeah. Unless if they call me personally, generations like Brandon, come, we need you. Let's yeah. see what you can do. I'll do it. But yeah. me going, I will not. Yeah. I noticed something. So when you audition, there's a form that we fill in that you, where you write your information before sure. you enter to the room. Sure. Yeah. There's actually a section there for social media. So now they actually do look at social media, um, the following and the type of work that you do. Mm. But not all of them do that, but some of them do, um, they do. Because mm. at the end of the day, if you come no chill and you've got 500k followers mm. and you're normal average views it's like probably 500k 6 700k mm. generation is sitting there they're thinking if i get this person then we're bringing along the 600k people yeah fuck his talent we, we don't care what he does or yeah. how talented he is yeah. we want these numbers and then they test it out they bring you on to the show then when you attract the numbers that's when you stay long so most of them fail if you can see um content creators that have had cameos on on soapies yeah. they don't show much they come and go because at some point it's hard to maintain they they, they don't know how it's, it's it's not content this this mm. is acting it's a craft now yeah yeah so they write them off quickly because they can't maintain <sighs> acting is difficult and it's just not the same so social media does count but it doesn't at the same time mm. it doesn't at the same time because no. I mean, there are people who actually invest money to build their craft and their career, but now they are not known. True. It's going to affect them somehow. True, a lot. A lot, no chill. A lot, a lot. Because even till now, I have friends I studied with. They invested thousands, hundreds of thousands doing this course until we have a MAPI tech and we are qualified as we are. But uh, I shall want to drop names, but a, a Brendan would go just because he's a TikToker. He would just go and get um, a, a casting because he's got 2 million followers. Mm. He's going to bring a crowd. Me, because no one knows me, but I'm qualified, I'm experienced, I'm talented. You so that's the competition also. now. You understand? So now there's the competition that people who went to school for this would have, you know. What, what is the future of that in, in the long run? What's going to happen mm. uh, for... I'm asking this because there are students or kids today studying drama. Yeah. 
You know, they're passionate. You know, they believe in this thing. Mm. And we already have people who are unemployed. Mm. How do we resolve this issue of fairness and also opening up for a lot of students and even people who are passionate about this to get in? I think that one is a deep one, to be honest. It needs to start, first of all, from the broadcasters. You know, um, they should be strict with their rules to say you will not audition if you don't meet certain, you know, um, standards. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe you should have a qualification before you can audition or you should have at least training from somewhere or whatever. If they can start implementing that, then I think it could work. But also my biggest advice that I'd always give to someone who's within the art or who's aspiring to be within the art is master your craft guys i i can never emphasize this enough and i know it for sure because I, I i saw it with myself mm. and not just me but there's people around me that also did that you know master your craft it opens it just does things for you mm. if you are very good at what you do it becomes easy to do things people want support but i always say it's not a must for anyone to support you no chill you can't force you can't say i mean uh, you're fine people don't support why why are we supporting why, why should we support you mm. Mm. why that's my question if someone says they don't get support why why should you be supported give us a reason then we will where does the reason come from mastering your craft or being good at whatever skill mm. you have you understand if you're a plumber be good at being a plumber yeah. we'll talk about you everyone would want you because people like talking about great things things that are different so if you excel as, as a plumber, I'll go to more and speak to my friends. Now as the plumber, the economy is a plumber. Immediately. Immediately, guys. Eh, you're in Jaga Cool. I found another baba. Already, that's marketing for you. You're not even there. You don't even know there's people in the world yeah. talking about you. But if you are not good at what you do, you are just a normal plumber or a normal artist or just average, then there's nothing special about you. No one will talk about you. Unless if they have a reason to talk about you, maybe mm. you did something wrong. Mm. But when you master your craft, you stand out. People want to talk about you. They want to associate with you. They want to spend money on you. They want to see you. They just be great at what you do. So once you create what you do, I feel like opportunities come a bit better. Damn. You just also reminded another uh, verse in Proverbs chapter 22, uh, verse 29. It says that, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall not stand near men. He shall stand mm. before kings. Mm. Mm. Diligent is the mm. word. Yeah. You know, that good. Yeah. You should never. I mean, the Bible says saying you will never be ignored. You can't. You can't. Damn, man. I mean, that that is wisdom right there. Mm. That is wisdom. So now, this is how we solve this problem of unemployment. It goes there also. I believe so. It's I no longer so. about the qualification because qualification doesn't show that you are good at something. Yes just shows you that you have theoretical knowledge mm. on that mm. whatever particular mm. service that you offer or do. But you can't expect to, to, to be supported not sure, when there's nothing special you're doing or that's making you stand out or different from other people. You can't go around saying, ah, I mean, I can't support you. What do you do in your class that shows them that Nochi is doing the most? Damn. How are you different from everyone else? We're learning. We're learning. Man. You know. So yes, I strongly believe in in whatever they should do, not just art. Even if you're a bricklayer, even if it doesn't matter what you do, just excel in it. Be the best at it. Be be better than everyone in your circle. Then you'll always you'll always be the one that gets more gigs. But if you just fit in like a penguin, it's like when you see penguins, mm. do you know which one is special? <laughs> They're all the same. They're just walking there. It's penguins. <laughs> You know, but if there was a big one there with a white strip, a, a stripe there, yeah, you look nice. Is this one? Why? Because it's unique. It's offering something that others don't offer. But if it doesn't have, you will just be one of those. <sighs> hey, my guy, I see you agree. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true, man. Yeah. Uh, let, let's now, man, you know, I can, we can spend so much time talking about this because, yeah. bruh, this is what we need and in I our country. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we need in our country, man. These are the, the podcasts that needs to be, to go out there because mm -hmm. more than just, it's not even about, bruh, we try, the aim, the <laughs> motive, the vision is to educate, is to encourage, huh. you know, and a little bit of entertainment.
three E's. Mm. That's why we exist, no chill. And shout out to our sponsor again, guys. Just to remind you, of it, if you bet, don't forget to use no chill code to sign up and get 50 rand bonus. And if you are under 18, this part is not for you, please. Nah. But feel to bet easy and responsibly, right? So now let's let's talk about. Um, I have seen you going out to schools, you know. Yes, sir. This is one thing that I want to start doing this year, you know, it's gonna fall part under the notional broadcast. But mm -hmm. now we are offline. How can we do that together? Um. So. TBO Productions is the one that hosts the school tours. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is that I have a team actually, you know. Sure. So there's a team of like seven, six people that I work with. Sure. Photographer, my yeah. PA slash admin yeah. and all of that. Yeah. As I told you, I was supposed to come with them tomorrow, but yeah. you know, we had to come today. Yeah. So I came alone. But yeah, um, they helped me find the schools. So they helped me find the schools. And then after we lock the schools down, we invite certain people to come. So I'm also very strict with who I invite because mm. I get a lot of DMs and messages. Ah, but I did a school. Yeah. But my aim is this. I don't want people to just come for the sake of standing there and smiling. Yeah. Do something because the aim of this edutainment school tour yeah. is for us to offer something different as content creators to the to, 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 to learners. To learners, sure. What do we offer? We're teaching them about social media presence yes. and how to create a brand out of yourself and yeah. how to monetize, monetize yeah, sure. from social media. Sure. So that's what we're going there to teach. And then we give them an entertainment, um, comedy entertainment from some of the creators that do it on stage. Sure. And then we also have celebrities like the last one we had, we had double Q mark. Uh, performing in Paris, we traveled with them sure. to the tours. So this time that we're gonna be uh, the one that's coming now, we're gonna be traveling with Lucia Shazi and Harry Stone K, mm. and then with some of the creators as well. So I don't know if you know Lucia uh, Shazi and Harry Stone K. I thought uh, you mentioned Lucia Shazi today, ne? Khotman, Khotman, eh? Yeah, I think he's he's gonna be coming eh? today. Oh, okay. oh, is it? I would have loved to see him. That's 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 my yeah. I, that guy grew up growing up. He was my childhood hero. Yeah, Shazi for me growing up was our cast by that time. You yeah. Know? So growing up and being at this point that I'm at today, where I can speak to him on the phone and we talk as if we've been knowing each other for a long time. Yeah. It's really a blessing, man. No chill, and that's what I mean by being great. I don't think I was ever gonna be mm. in that position where all these guys. I mean, Bruce Bivuma. The, the goalkeeper he chiefs came all the way from his hood, drove one hour, 30 minutes to come see me, made a video call with other chiefs players. In my head, when that was happening, I was like, I don't even watch soccer. So I don't even know the guys. I don't even know Bruce. I just asked my light because <laughs> my younger brother plays soccer and he bets and stuff. Yeah. So before he came, I sent my brother. I'm like, hey, dog, who's this? What does yeah. he do? You know? He's yeah. like, ah, he's a, he's a goalkeeper. What's what? I'm like, oh, okay, sure. You must ch tell your younger brother yeah. to check easy bet. So yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. I will. Most definitely. Yeah. Like, most definitely. I'll let him know about it. I mean, you know, they, they make things easier. Even for us to be here, it's them. You know, they're yeah. making everything smooth. Bless it. Shut up. <laughs> so, Shut up. man, because, you know, I, uh, this is the vision that I wrote maybe three years back to go to the communities. Yes, sir. The same thing that you're already doing, but I want to find the dynamics. And I mean, if you join we, us, we can travel together. Ne? Yeah, we can we go are when we look at school. I can let you know. Then you tell me what you would like to do at the school. Yeah. Then we just add it as part of the program because we have a program. Sure. And then whenever we travel, the school knows that we're going to be doing this, going to be doing this, and doing this. Because you know what was the aim? Mm -hmm. To print hundred books, my books, ne? Okay. To go there and give them. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. Our next tour is on the fourteenth. Great, the, the, the great twelfths. You know, obviously, we can do. Yeah. If we get investors, then we can print as many. Yeah. Because, bruh, this book I didn't write it to make money. Mm. I wrote it to educate people, and oh, I know yes. some of them they cannot even afford it. It's two fifty, mm. but I know it's too much, especially for the schools from the rural areas this is what this is what my target right now you know that's that was the plan and say i'm gonna print books with my own money and go there speak and leave them with my book mm. because i want people to know this okay you understand so if it's possible to let's do it no, i'll also go. come with my own team you know i also have other influencers so it's just we're just gonna go there and the brands also we can go to brands and say guys this is, this is a do. team of brands. Let's go offline. Mm. You understand? 
maybe easy bet can also be part of us you understand yeah. you know just have to motivate and stuff like that and we go all out to impact lives let's do that no chills it exists let's for do to, to, to do that so we'll talk offline but yes, guys yes. just know that if there's anyone who wants to be part of this anyhow anyhow maybe you you know schools that needs this Talk to us, you know, email info at nochill.co.za. Let's talk. Let's, let's change lives. Let's change lives, uh, Brandon, you know. Yes, it's, sir. It's, it's, God gave you that gift, not for you. It's not mine. Yeah, it's to serve. I'm, I'm glad that you understand. To serve. <laughs> I'm glad that you understand, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to focus on the industry itself because yes, the industry, you know, I know you're a content creator, mm. but I... I'm already seeing you as that in the, in that in the industry of acting and filming. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's some aspiring talents that wants to be in this entertainment. I know you have to be good. That people are good and they are great. You yeah. understand? But <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. I mean, change your ways of of doing things. Um, what our advice is? Let's say Useka, I see you talented and. The thing is, that's another thing about talent, you know, people need to confirm it and a lot and the right people, because that's another thing, we mislead each other a lot, you know, ah, you're very good, even though I know you're not good, just because <laughs> I know you and I like you, you know, that kills you, no chill, man, it's bad, because now tomorrow you want to go, that's why people go on idols and they say, their family say they seem good, but you can hear they can't. If you're honest with your child, you'd save them the embarrassment, you know? Yeah. So, um, for that person, I would say, Mingle with people, you know, put yourself in certain yeah, spaces as well. Sure. Where there's people that does what you wish to do and put yourself out there. Sell yourself as an artist. Um, be as, as part of many things as possible. Cause one thing that I also did when I started out, I never cared about money, no shit. I just cared about being involved. Yeah. And that helped me because a few years later, I have a huge profile. They don't know that I did not get paid for mm. all these jobs. So when I come and I put my profile on the table, I look at you in the eyes and you see two pages, you, you shake. Yeah. You're like, hey, 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 hey you work, ne? Because, I mean, that was me. I was, and, and I'm glad that you reminded me because mm. something that I should have uh, asked you earlier on. You, you, were, you, you were on commercial KFC, Ellen yeah, yeah. Groove. And tell me about that experience. How you got into that, the experience while you are within Mm. And then what it did after, yeah. In terms of how you perceive things, the KFC ad yeah, yeah. being being part of it also, how did it change your perspective? But from how you got inside the, you know, someone might get a chance using what you did as a formula. Okay, so uh, within the art industry, especially for actors, mm -hmm. there's agencies. So, sure. but. There's also an organization called PMA, uh, which the normal public don't know. Yeah. But as professional artists, we were taught about those things because we are in it. Sure. We are in the industry. It's, it's PMA. Know? What does it stand for? Um, sheesh, I forgot exactly what it stands for and I don't want to be wrong with it, but yeah. I'll double check and tell you. Probably you, you do it when you edit. I won't. Yeah. But there's a website mm. called uh, the PMA. Mm. So when you go there, it's agencies that are... I don't want to say the best agencies in South Africa, but they are uh, ones that are mostly recommended. Mm. So any, any channel would take their talent first before the ones you find on Google. Yeah. You know, so you find an agent first, you sign up and then after signing up, they will send you to castings mm. and you go and you audition. So I used to do that a lot when I was young, because remember it was before I went to school. So I didn't have the knowledge and skills yeah. that I had. Yeah. I just wanted to do art. So yeah, I had an agent, um, sent me out to jobs, got a few casting calls. And it, it was a great experience. I mean, being on Ellen Gray, it was a 30 seconds advert that we shot, but we shot it for three days in Sentin City. It was amazing, you know, mm. to me to witness that hey, 30 seconds is shot for three days. How is that possible? And I'm talking from the morning until at night. Yeah. Like, why are they shooting so much? This thing's only 30 seconds, but now I understand because I'm also in the business. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would basically say that, um, doing all of those projects just showed me a different side of art. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what also made me not to want to do it the way that I'm doing it, um, 
you know, not to go the, the normal route that like yes. most of my friends did. I don't want to be a typical actor. Yeah. I always tell my mom, and this is very weird and controversial to a lot of people, yeah. but I told my mom that if she sees me on TV every day mm. in a soapy, she should know that I failed in my dreams. I'm a failure. Mm. Mm. To a lot of people, it's a dream come true. You know, I would meet a lot of people. Oh, can't wait to see you on TV. My heart would be like, yeah, yeah. But deep inside, I'm like, yes, I don't want to be explaining it. Why, 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 why is that something that you wouldn't do? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a nine to five. I have friends. <laughs> I have friends that I work with um, that are on TV full time, like really full time. You know, famous actors. I see their lifestyle. I see that there's nothing great in being an actor. You're just famous. And that's all it brings. And you, you can't be, you don't have creative rights. You are limited. There are certain things you cannot do or project you can't be part of because you are contract, uh, contractually um, bound Bandit. to this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not as glamorous as people think it is. And it doesn't even pay that much unless if you have a really strong role and you have things on the side that are keeping you going. So with me, I'd rather do what I am doing because my aim is to uh, see what Manda N does. Yeah. I will be the next Mandla N, but Brandon Oliphant, or be the next Brandon Oliphant, where I have productions, put people in. That's the vision. I don't want to be hired as an actor. Yes, I'm not saying don't. Guys, uh, casting directors, I'm not saying don't. Yes, <laughs> hire me if, 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 if you feel like I'm fit for the role. Yeah. I know, because I studied it at the end of the day. I'm still an artist. I can't yeah. say I won't do it. I will do it because I love it and I'm passionate about it. Sure. But I told my mom, if she sees me on a soapy every day <laughs> as a character there, she should know that my child failed in his dreams. He's a failure, that one. Yes. That's what my mom should know. It's deep. So it's very controversial. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's, it's weird. No, no, no but, 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 but it's dream. It's, we, we all have dreams. Others, they dream to be on TV. So, I mean, yeah. that is your dream. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, it's just that it's just too deep, man. Because thinking about it now... Hmm. You know, when I grew up, I wanted to be on TV even myself. Yeah. But now I yeah. see... Nah. I'm limited, mm. you know. Right now, this, this is my thing. Yes. You understand? This is my thing. And I'm proudly saying this. You understand? No one is... I didn't sign any contract with... The, I signed, obviously, with the production, but it's mine. The rights are mine. You understand? Right. So, you need to be... To have, to have ownership. Ownership mm. is the most powerful thing that... Yeah. Us youth in South Africa, if you don't own anything, trust me. You, I'm, and I'm saying this from a good heart. I'm, I'm giving you an advice. Oh, mm. ownership. You know, the, um, there's three category of people that um, are going to survive this economical wave that is coming. Mm. Number one is the people who are able to communicate with machines. Mm. You need to understand how to code, you know. Mm. It's going to be the world of machines. So yeah. if you don't know how to communicate with the machines, you're going to be wiped out. Mm. Number two, you need to be good at what you do. Mm. That's what you mean. So that you be become great. an asset. You yes, great. you're an asset. No one is going to hire you if you're not an asset. Mm. People want, they want profits. Mm. So if they're hiring you or they want you to be part of the team, they see that you're an asset. Yeah. Number two. Number three is this one that we're mentioning. I, 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 we're talking about it, man. Ownership. Okay. You must be the owner of platforms or things. Mm. Three categories of people mm. who are going to thrive, mm. not survive. If you don't have these three things, you're out. Mm. In the next five years, I'm not talking about 20 years. Mm. It's already a machine are here now. AI True. is taking True. people out. If you don't understand AI, machine learning, algorithms, deep learning, all these things. Mm. And we're taking it lightly because already... Things people don't see it, but already it started. Look at McDonald's. This self-servicing <laughs> things that they bring. We see it as, oh, see an improver. But that's a way of them introducing it so that they can see if, oh, this system really works. We can't work without cashers. Once we get used to working, ordering, and everything is delivered without cashers, cashers will be out because we don't need them anymore. And it's cheaper with the machine because you probably service it after three and, months. You don't and it's so month. fast. Fast. Efficiency is what they want, cheaper. Yes. I mean, it's a piece of code. It's yes. going to replace people who spent 12 years going to school. Of course. 12 or more than 12 years. Of course. A piece of code. And if you find yourself not understanding how to communicate, because obviously they need uh, the people interaction. The yes. System, yeah. So you need to find yourself being part of that. Mm. If you are not, you are out. True.
So yeah, it's important. It's important for us, man. To, I to acquire all those things. I enjoy this uh, conversation, man. I enjoy it too, so much, <laughs> guys. I mean, so uh, let me just tell my people, my community. This is my community. You know, we talk like this, and no chillers. I feel to every Sunday at nine, we are posting new episode. Come and learn. These are the plat- one of the platforms that, to be honest, I'm not marketing this. Ne? It's true. Mm-hmm. We, we, we're doing this to educate. It's very few. You know, now social media, education, it doesn't get as many numbers as gossip and mm. all this kind of things that Drama. doesn't build people, right? Yeah. But if you want to learn, trust me, from the people with the results, people are using their phones to change their lives. Mm. This is the channel. Subscribe, share with others. But for it, you need to learn. Entertainment is good, but there has to be a time to learn for self understand. improvement self improvement yeah, you know growth. that's why we, that's why we're doing this man and 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 thank you Tebza, for coming yes sir um what message do you have man uh overall uh to the people who are watching uh, just talk to, to those people yeah. man and uh, take your time talk right, to those right. people my brother before before i talk to you guys i just want to say that uh there's crazy family tv or cartoons yeah, that are dropping this coming Sunday, which is on the 20, 28th of January. So the content that you guys see me making, it's going to be cartoons now. Yeah, that, that's uh, great, man. So, yeah, hope you guys will love it and watch <laughs> it. I'm excited for the idea. I'm excited for the initiative. For me, it's just big. Mm. So, yeah. And then um, with, with other things, man, all I can say is find what you love and let it kill you. Always be kind and show love and do the most. You know what I mean? Just do the most. But all I can say is find what you love, be good at it, and do it, live for it. You know what, you, you know what I mean? Because yeah. at the end of the day, no chill. Whether we like it or not, my brother, it's tough going nine to five. It's tough in the f- industry that we are in. Yes. So choose your struggles. It's <laughs> not easy anyway. Nine to five is hard. I mean, I'm waking up at six to go do something you don't love, but you have to do it because you have to survive. No one can tell me that they're happy to do that. Yes. And it's sad. It, it kills us as black people because you grow with the thing and you come back at home, you're a grumpy black father. Yes. You're not grumpy because you choose to be grumpy. You are not happy. You are yes. shouting at you at work. You woke up, you don't want to go to work. You come back, you are tired. And you can't even afford. You Still, understand. you are going to, to work, but I mean, things are expensive now. Your salary is already finished. It's not in. <laughs> But it's finished. You can you you sitting there. It's the twenty fourth. You are getting paid on the twenty fifth. Why are you stressing? Hey, I don't have money. Oh, like It's already it went to things, you know. So all I can say, man, is master something. Do what you love. Um, invest in your dreams. Invest in your passions more than anyone. If people see that you can invest in whatever you want, it makes it easier for them to also extend a hand. I'll make a simple example. Mm. If I'm stuck and it's raining, there's a storm outside, I'm stuck in a car and I'm sitting inside, people passing, mm. will you ever stop and help me? I'm sitting inside the car. Mm-hmm. But if you see me running around, I'm holding a tire in the rain and I'm busy, somewhere, somehow, someone will stop and say, let me assist this person. He's, he's, he's trying. Yeah. So that's all we need. We need to try, you know, get out of that car, into that storm, let the rain pour on you. But do what you need to do in order for you to be able to get where you have to get to. Mm. And then within all of it, man, just show love and be kind. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, those, those are powerful words, <laughs> man. These are expensive words. <laughs> hey, expensive. you get paid to talk, you know? You know, yeah. exactly. Hey, that's powerful also, man. I mean, but I, I just want you to touch last because I feel like yeah. you're, you're too excited with your next project, which is animation. Yes, sir. Please, yes, sir. Uh, just touch what is what does what is the dynamic and why yeah. are you doing it um, and, and what do you think is going to add value to how is going to add value to the to your people to the people that watch your content okay so um, first of all this is a project i've been working on for a long time it's mm. been i think three years mm. working on it trying to find an animator to help me with it mm. um but they're too expensive animators are too expensive mm. so it was difficult for me to find one and god just sent one out of the blue actually there were three of them that dm'd me yeah i like yo would like to do cartoons of your content and post it i'm like uh, oh they're actually telling me mm. say hey would like to do cartoons please don't come for us when it blows up whatever yeah. i'm like no no i'm already working on that and they say we work together 
Mm. So they all sent me their profiles. I went through. I was like, hey, I like this one more. This mm. one looks like they work harder and it looks proper. Yeah. So I chose one and then we started building the idea and working on it. So the cartoons basically are just typically exactly what I do with my real life um, original content. Mm. And I'm putting it to cartoons. So how, how are cartoons going to better my craft or put me in uh, elevate yeah. whatever that I'm doing at the moment is first of all, they'll have access to me in certain places. Um, like what there's channels, two channels. I don't like talking about them, but one of them is good TV where they offer to play my content, mm. you know? So I want to put my cartoons there. There's TVs that are at certain places where I want my cartoons to play. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's like in campuses, TT, you yeah. know? Mm. So I want to, I want my, um, content to play there also for, marketing for brands it would be easier yeah. for us to control how we want things to mm. look we don't have limits because it's design it's not a human doing yes. it yes um also just for kids you know i just would love to, to have the young kids to have something to watch while the mother is watching the real one the yes. kids can be watching the cartoons you know so it's gonna be in zulu exactly the way it is exactly the way it is just powerful. in cartoons powerful man i'm yes, excited sir. and congrats my brother on thank you so on much that, i really you know, appreciate it shows that you know you think like me you think like me you, you innovate you so I was thinking when, when we were talking out there i just didn't say it but i was like yeah i actually think the same <laughs> <laughs> you know great minds uh, think alike man yeah, you yeah. know it's a good saying it's true but uh, thanks man i don't know how to say this i'm really grateful thank um, you so much for, for, me, for coming yeah, t- telling you, a lot of people are going to learn, especially the non chillers, uh, my community. Yeah, I enforce them to learn. I hope so. Hope they, so. they they know that okay, we're here to learn yeah. every day. They're learning, you know. And I'd like to say shout out to no chillers. I feel to let's meet next Sunday, and don't forget, I feel to easy bet. You know, Easy Bet is our sponsor. I will never forget to say that. Shout out. Let's meet next week. And, yeah. Goodbye. TBO. My brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.